put off by how long this video is, don't worry. I tend to jam-pack my videos with as much content, as many details as I possibly can, and I try to talk pretty fast. So while the video is a bit on the long side, I don't repeat myself and I get into a lot of details about the subject that, you know, pretty much anything that I feel I can comment on and that I think you might find interesting. If the video is simply too long for you, I did record a shorter version and the link is in the description box. Just Cause Video Game Review. And yes, that is Just Cause, as in a cause that is worthy, that is fair. Not as in a tween girl going, <laughs> just cause, you know. Now, things are pretty bad. The government is out of control. It's just... The police are everywhere and are mistreating the people. And military is just out of control. But enough about the America, the, the US, hey, <laughs> botched that completely. No, things are all also quite bad, almost as bad, in the fictional country of San Espirito, where the dictator, Salvador Mendoza, is really abusing his power. And he may, in fact, be a danger to the rest of the world, which is, of course, why the CIA sent you in. That and the fact that, you know, the... The Simpsons character, you know, the Arnold ripoff. Yeah, he was unavailable. Now, you are Rico, a suave, yes, a Latin American agent for the CIA, and you are sent in to, yeah, pull off a bit of a coup, and you basically have these two... You, you have a weapons expert who helps you out, who gives you new toys, and you have a, I guess, operation, you know, you, you a, a, an immediate boss, basically. And basically every time you go to them for a briefing, they're always living it up, like, you know, working on their tan at the beach or, you know, planning a barbecue. Yeah, always. They, they, the game really takes... Make, makes good use of its exotic location of a, you know, South American exotic island. There's a real feel of the, the style and tone of this South American you know, the, you've got the, the villages, you've got the exotic babes, and the music also really captures the location environment rather well. Along the way, you will aid and receive help in return from the local guerrillas who are surprisingly well armed, and they, they really have quite the army. You often wonder why you're sent out by them to you know, steal TV cameras from the local news crew, who are, by the way, armed for some reason, but again, so are most everyone in, in this world. Everyone but the, you know, aforementioned villagers who are as vanilla as the NPCs of you know, the, the non-enemy NPCs of the Assassin's Creed games. Although, in the Assassin's Creed games, you can actually, you know, get into a fist fight in, in some of them. And here, there's not even that. They won't even tear you out of their car, no matter how much you abuse the, the fact that you have a vehicle. Now, the... Yes, the, the guerrillas and the 
one of the two cartels, drug culture cartels, the Rioja, who, the, the guerrillas you help directly against the government, the Rioja cartel you help against the Men Montano cartel, who are on the on Mendoza's payroll. That's that's something I quite like about this game. The 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 drug dealers aren't bad people. The drug dealers who are working for the government, those are bad people. Now, immediately that that does pose one of the, the problems here. Basically those are the three groups you work for, the third one being the CIA. You only really have those three bosses and I mean as Grand Theft Auto clones go, Grand Theft Auto 3 clones I suppose, even you know the Simpsons hit and run had multiple bosses and yes I played that game. There was a time where I was a big enough fan of The Simpsons that I would actually pay money, my own money, for games that had that license to them. Yeah. But yes, the, the where you usually enjoy in particularly in Grand Theft Auto games, the ability to go, you know, to different people and get assignments for different people. Do you want to work for the crooked cop, the, you know, Yakuza head, or, you know, a third, or, or the, you know, cro the, the, the businessman who has questionable methods sometimes, you know, what do you, what would you like at this point? And if you try a mission for one of them and you fail, you can retry it immediately, or you can say, well, I don't really feel like, you know, escorting an armored truck right now. Let's see what the others have to offer as far as, you know, missions go. Now, the basic setup of, of missions here is that the CIA missions are actually the only story missions. So, whether you actually do any missions for the guerrillas and the Montanos is entirely up to you. And if you... That, that's something that some have complained about. Apparently you can complete the entire game in five hours, you know, the, the main storyline missions for the CIA. That's pretty underwhelming. But yeah, it's, it's quite well worth completing missions for the, the other two, which, in my case at least, brought it to about 33 hours of total game time, maxing out those two groups. Now, that is about what it took me to complete Grand Theft Auto 3 as well, and while in both of them, with that there is still some stuff left undone, some, some collectibles left uncollected. In Grand Theft Auto 3, you have a lot you can do. In Grand Theft Auto in general, there's always stuff to do. You can't run out of... I mean, you can always retry a race, or, you know, just go for a fun little... Just see how much, you know, carnage you can get in before you are carnage. Destruction of property and being a general nuisance, maybe more like. Before you get, you know, all the, you know, all the way up to the military following you and then lead them on a merry chase through the streets. Which is always fun. In this, there's not that much left to do. Once you have the collectibles, yes, there are races that you can try to beat your own time in and you know, yeah, you can drive around, but there's really not that much to do. In Grand Theft Auto, you... Yeah, in Grand Theft Auto, you can also do these side things. In addition to races, you can see how high you can get in taxi missions, ambulance missions, the vigilante missions with the cop car, and the fire truck missions. 
and there's nothing like that here. There's very little beyond just the very storyline oriented stuff because again your other two bosses are you know you are working towards overthrowing this corrupt government so it's very much just that you you don't really take a break from that and focus on other things which again to to draw a quick comparison to that's that's something that Assassin's Creed gets up until the third one, but enough said about that one. Okay, I made no promises. In From the second and onwards, you can do things that don't really have to do with the main mission. You can work for the courtesans, you, courtesans, whatever. You can work for the thieves, the mercenaries, you know, just working to impress them, and you might, you know, earn a better weapon or something, and that's, that's fun, that's, you know, if you want to take a break from the story, you can. Here, not really. Even the collectibles are directly linked to the story. Collectibles add points to one of the three main groups, and that's it. Now, getting back to, that segues nicely into why you might want to put in any, you know, time with the, time and effort with the other two groups, the Mon the Rioja, and yes, the Rioja, you, you should be spitting in the face of the person in front of you. To, to properly pronounce it, and the guerrillas. Both have safe houses with unique vehicles, some weapons. The guerrillas are especially nice, you know, happy to give you weapons, which again makes me wonder why they really need your services so much if they have weapons and vehicles to spare. And yeah, these safe houses, which in part you earn by getting more points and, and rising through the ranks. And for the guerrillas, it's also about liberating, you know, more, more places. I don't think the, Mont the Rioja are actually really requiring you to liberate things in order for you to get more safe houses. In, with both of them... <coughs> excuse me. With both of them, you rise through the ranks either by liberating or by doing side missions. And rising through the ranks, yeah, there, there are, I don't know, a dozen or so different levels that you can attain. And you can always go and see what will I get on the next level or even the final level. You know, what, what will I be earning? And the... To briefly cover the liberations, basically, the, the liberations are quite finite, although there are a number of them, there, there are a lot, starting with the Rioja. Basically, the Rioja will be overthrowing the Montano, you know, I guess, bases of operation, and yeah, taking them over for themselves. And any time you do that, you get another source of side missions. And you can, you're free to use the vehicles that come with the base, which I think always includes a helicopter, so that's cool. And the, the, the basic idea of a liberation is you are taking over a small area. So it's like a, a fortress assault, you might say. You have to destroy three barriers, three blockades, which, you know, basically means blowing them up. So whether you want to use grenades, you know, a bazooka, a grenade launcher, or your C4, that's up to you. Or, you know, you can blow up 
in a vehicle to buy it, but really, you know, the, the others are recommended, I would say. Now, once you've blown up the three blockades, that's where it gets a little more varied based on which you are doing. For the Rioja, you're then taking out the Subteniente, which is, yeah, the, the leader of that particular operation. And then you will have liberated. For the guerrillas, you aren't, you, you, you're liberating various things. You, you liberate a, a settlement, a town, I guess, or a city, maybe, a military base, or an airport. And the, the, they, basically are that they're again the same with the with the three blockades but then you have to switch flags at the end to fully take over that base and yes you heard me right military bases and yes that does mean tank on tank you know Apache chopper on Apache chopper and tank combat and do be do be aware They do have SAM sites, so you don't want to just rush right on in with your You know Apache chopper cuz you might just get shot down Now <clears throat> Excuse me as far as I've been able to tell, whenever you liberate something for the guerrilla, you do in fact gain a new safe house for them. Which, frankly, un unfortunately also means that if you are, if you, like me, run into a glitch preventing you from taking over at least some of, or liberating at least some of these places, then you won't get that many guerrilla safe houses. At the end, I had maybe seven where, you know, I had... Well, for the, for the Rioja, I only had ten, but that's because you only get one for each of... I guess it's ten levels then, of, you know, rising through their ranks. And you do also have safe houses for the agency. Now, to, to go a little bit more into the safe houses, they are indeed, you, you can save there, you can also heal there, and when, even when there isn't, you know, weaponry for you to pick up, you can at least refill your ammunition. Now, and, and I believe every single safe house has a vehicle, it just won't always be a really interesting one, you know, but I believe the Rioja always have, you know, every single Rioja safe house has a different vehicle from, you know, well there might be one or two doubles, but if you go to a Rioja safe house, it's gonna have a new vehicle, which also makes earning them all the more fun. The Guerrilla, I think, are more Kind of, kind of follow a set pattern in that the vehicle will always be the highest vehicle you've unlocked by rising through their ranks. Now the and and actually I suppose that's enough on safe houses for now. To get back to the side missions, these are infinite but there is a limited number of different ones and they're a bit... Well, well, briefly, just covering how they work. You have a ton of different sources of them. Every single... Every single place you've liberated, whether it's for the guerrillas or the Rioja, there's a guy who... I'm, I'm gonna refer to them as hosts. There's a host for a side mission, 
and you can go to that guy as many times as you'd like and ask for another mission. You can only be doing one side mission at a time, and you can't save while a side mission is active, which, again, I'm just going to sprinkle in the bugs here and there. If, if someone other than you kills your target when you're sent to assassinate, you're screwed. You can't... It will, it will say that you've completed the mission, but you can't start a new side mission, or you can't start a new side mission, but you can't save. So you're just going to have to load and try another mission, which frankly made me dread starting an assassination mission. So yeah, basically there are 20 different, about 20 different side missions. They might vary some based on where you are. And they are completely randomly selected whenever you go to a host. Even if you fail a mission and then go to the same, same host, it might be a different one. If you die on the, on the mission and load, go to the same host, it might be a different one. In a way, this is good because it is very much, you don't know what you're going to be doing. And that's, that's interesting. It, uh, randomization under a certain, under certain restraints is good in video games. Part of it is that there's, truck, there is, I, th as, with, with the random selection, there is, in fact, no way to really... There's, there's no continuity between them. If you steal a car in one of them, then the next one, or just a later one, won't involve you, you know, let's say using that car or escorting that car. You know, when, when you steal, you know, a camera from the local TV crew, news crew, that's not going to then lead to a mission where you have to, say, hold off the military from a certain base while, you know, the guerrillas record a message to send out to the people. You know, there's... So, so the only way to tell that you're making progress in these side missions is really rising through the ranks. And frankly, do not stay too long on the side missions. It can really, at, if you stay too on them for too long, you're just grinding. You you end up just, and you can really tell it gets really boring. I've seen a lot of reviewers comment on that that the game can really, you know, yeah, they'll they'll say things like it can be fun in short bursts. Frankly, I always only played in short bursts, so. I didn't really notice anything other than that, so yeah. Carpal tunnel, so yeah. And uh, then the, the and, and yeah, others have commented that it, in, it does indeed get downright boring if you play, and, and I think that's really the side missions. If you just complete the side Side, one side mission after another, it's going to get extremely boring because, as I said, you can barely tell you're making progress. Whether you've completed one or ten, you can't necessarily tell. Especially when you get higher through the ranks and it takes a lot of points to get further. And it doesn't help that side missions and main missions alike are very straightforward. In Grand Theft Auto, there you might be going out on a mission that seems plenty straightforward, but that then has a twist to it. You know, maybe you're just escorting someone, and it seems like oh, this is just this is babysitting. You just you know taking someone back and forth between a couple of different places. But whoops. There's a raid, you gotta get that person away from the police.
fast. So th that's, you know, the, the issue of, of only the three bosses, nothing ever happens. You're never, your loyalty is never in question. You never have to go and do something drastic to prove your loyalty. You never, you're never suddenly double-crossed and have to be wary of the guys you were just working for, you know, a mission or two ago. There's never anything like that, so really... And, and there's always only, almost always, only one stop along the way. So, you go to the host, you're sent out somewhere to do something, and then you have to either go back to the host or go to some other place. Roughly, you know, somewhere between one to three kilometers of traveling. And that's it. You never, along the way, again, almost never, along the way, find that your mission is now something else. If you're sent out to do a basic trade, that's it. You, you do the trade. You're not double-crossed. You don't have to blow away the guys and then steal back the things that you gave them or, you know, fight them for what you were trading for. It, it hardly ever happens. It's completely neg negligible in how rarely it happens. And it just, it gets really bland. Yes, you know, there is the, the little bit of variety to, you know, will I be killing someone, will I be doing a trade, stealing something, but that's about it. The, the, it lacks the ingenuity of Grand Theft Auto, where Grand Theft Auto takes just a few elements and does surprisingly well at mixing things up. You know, basically Grand Theft Auto has, you know, you, you might, there, there's time limits, there's, you know, shooting, killing people, destroying, you know, cars, vehicles, and, you know, being chased, escorting maybe, that's about it. And the way that they keep toying around with these different aspects, you know, so, okay, now you have to drive from here to here, but you have to make sure to get a certain car first because you're seating so and so many, or, you know, or you may have to drive fast, something like that. Then. Afterwards, you know, let's say it's a bank heist, you drive away from that, you're, you know, being chased by the police, you have to make sure that the guys you took to the bank heist survive, at least one of them. So if they die along the way, maybe you have to bail on your car and you and the guys are running in the streets, maybe they get shot by the police. Mission failed, have to try again. So you gotta find another car fast. Also, you can't complete the mission with the police still hunting you. So, you better find a respray shop or some of those stars, you know, that, that, you know, the bribes. That's interesting. Here, if, if you have a mission similar to that, it literally just is, you get the mission from the host, you go to the place, and then you go either back to the host or some other place. It's, it's too few stops, is one thing. You, there should at least be one or two more stops along the way. And, again, it's just far too straightforward. There's a reason people have said this has no storyline. It really doesn't. The, the, the side missions are one thing, but the, the main missions, yeah, let's, let's segue into those. To, to start with, side missions and main missions alike, the, the, you know, one stop along the way and then back, pretty much always. Your mission objectives won't really change once you've, you, you'll almost always be completing the mission you were sent out to do. It's not like, yeah, you're, you're pretty much always sent out to do a job and then you do the job. And in video games that can get kind of boring and predictable. 
So it's, it's always good when it turns out, uh-oh, this recon mission, you have a, one of your main targets, get into a good position, kill him, then come back. You know, something like that. Something that... a, a wild card. <coughs> Excuse me. So, yeah, that's the, the, the basic setup. Now, the main missions do... There's a little bit more continuity between them. Like, one of the first missions is freeing the leader of the guerrillas. Thus, they trust you now. Another is doing a mission for the Rioja. So again, they trust you now. But other than that, excuse me, there are entirely, excuse me, too many missions where you're killing VIPs on Mendoza's side. And it doesn't, you can't tell you're making any progress. You, and, and then, you know, you might be destroying some of his hardware, stealing something, or, you know, doing recon. But a lot of it just doesn't really have. They'll they'll throw in something really obvious and just you know they might take a step back. I'm I'm trying not to spoil anything here. They might take a step back just to give you something. You know you have to do something that you basically already did, but it was undone in one way or another, just to make sure you have something to do. You know just to kind of make the game longer, where again, in Grand Theft Auto, you, you're you working your way to the top. Here, you kind of... a couple of main missions in, you're working for the guerrillas, you're working for the agency, and you're working for the Riojas. Nothing else is going to change. Rising through the ranks, it gets you safe houses, it gets you, you know, vehicles and weaponry, that's it. You don't get tougher missions, you don't get I will say, the liberations do get tougher as you go, which is quite nice. The, the, yeah, the, the tank on tank and stuff, that doesn't happen right away. Or, actually, I didn't try to take on a military base right away, so I don't know if that's, like, really early on. But some of the liberations are tougher than others, so that's good. But, that's it. There's, you know, the, the main missions do get tougher as you go, definitely. But, yeah, you can't really tell that you're making progress. Like, in early Grand Theft Auto 3, I could really tell, you know, they kept sending me after, I think the first enemy was the Triad. And I could tell I'm doing more and more damage to these guys. You know, like, early on, I might be just, you know, destroying a minor operation of theirs. And then later, I might be killing a VIP. I might be, you know, there might be a big gang war going. In fact, part of the way you can tell is that in later missions still involving the Triad, they might send a lot of guys your way, and you're like, whoa, I really take these guys off. They are not pulling any punches anymore. So... Yeah, it, it feels like the world is alive and you are in it. You are doing things and those things have consequences. And mission-wise, that just isn't the case here to, to a pretty wide extent. Now, something quite nice about this that I see in too few open-world games is that a good two-thirds of the main missions are actually quite open. You choose you know, do you want to just drive right in and go, you know, head on? Do you want to parachute in from a bit further away? You can somewhat sneak. There, there are always, almost, yeah, two-thirds of, of the time, there's more than one way, and you can really... T like, again, let's say you're going into a military base. You know that they have tanks, they have Apache helicopters. Do you just want to try to sneak in and try to take cover behind buildings? Or do you want to go in like the frickin' Terminator, like Commando, like Rambo? 
and just decimate everything and really, you know, because the thing is, the game kind of meets you where you are on that. You see, if you, if there's an Apache on you and you're on foot, it's going to use the machine guns. If you're in a vehicle, it's bringing out the rockets. And no vehicle lasts all that long against rockets in this game. So that's well worth noting and thinking about when you're planning your strategy. And, and yes, the Apache helicopters and, yeah, tougher enemies do appear on the highest level of... It's, it's referred to as heat in this game, you know, when, when it's not just the cops, it's not the... FBI, they're, they're a version of FBI. It's the military, yeah, you will be, you know, up against an Apache, and if you are in a vehicle, it's gonna deploy rockets against you, so just, just think about that. Do you want to risk going on foot when anyone, any enemy could just pull up in a car, car doors open, there's several guys with assault rifles, and you do still have the Apache, and it is still a machine gun. Or do you want to hope that you can put enough distance between yourself and the Apache that it's not gonna blow you apart? So, yeah. Now, before I mentioned that you can somewhat sneak, note that I wouldn't be bringing this up if it wasn't for the game sort of going in this direction. There is a severely underdeveloped stealth aspect to this game. I feel like they should probably have just... The game is clearly rushed to, to yeah, get that one out of the way. I feel like they should have at some point along the way just admitted, you know what, we're not going to be able to do this stealth thing justice. Let's abandon it. Because it's really obvious that they what they wanted to do and it's, yeah, you're, you're wandering through the half-finished. Like, enemy detection is nowhere near as refined as it should be in something like that. This is not a Hitman or Splinter Cell. This is basically Grand Theft Auto. And, and lower than Grand Theft Auto, frankly. And, yeah, so, so basically... If you aren't blowing things up and going like head on, then in some missions at least, the enemy might not have noticed you yet. The you know, some missions they know you're coming, so yeah. And you there there is a handgun and a submachine gun which are silenced. But the thing is that you can be firing a gun, silenced or not, at an enemy, if, if they're like a mounted gun, and they're not looking at you, they might not notice you. They might not react, at least. You can shoot directly at them. You, you can be shooting them. You can kill them without them ever disengaging the mounted gun, turning towards you and shooting, or calling, sounding the alarm or anything. So, yeah, the, the silenced guns are right out of the... Yeah, they're, they're kind of pointless at that point. And then... And it doesn't really help that the silence... A handgun and a submachine gun in this game does not provide much stomping power. Again, this is not Hitman or Splinter Cell. You can't just really make sure you get that perfect headshot and it kills them. No, it usually takes more than one shot even to the head. Even with f rather powerful weapons. So, it just, it isn't that possible to, to really sneak. But, yeah, you can still, you know, you can choose whether to just go straight for, for it or somewhat sneaking in and at least getting close to your objective before you 
open fire and start, you know, making any kind of... The, the alarms in the game, if they had just had the, the thing of, you know, Medal of Honor, where you just, you shoot the alarm, and done, no more alarm, that would greatly add to the stealth aspect. Now, I suppose this is a good time to get into the, the various things where this very much where, where this has a, an identity as something that isn't just, you know, Grand Theft Auto. Again, with, with Simpsons, it's the fact that it's in Springfield and you're interacting with characters from the show. With Godfather the Game, it's the fact that the missions you're undertaking are, you know, can tie into the the, the movie's storyline. In this, it's the extreme sports. It's the fact that you can literally do... I, I already mentioned the parachute. If you're on a vehicle that's going fast, or if you jump from the top of a cliff out towards the... The, the drop, then you can engage your parachute. That's literally it. And yes, I, you heard that right. Vehicle. I'm not saying this one type of vehicle, any vehicle, you can engage the parachute. You can shoot from the parachute. You can... You, you can steer the parachute. You can, you can disengage the parachute and be in free fall and you can still control. This is a game where no matter where you are, no matter what you're doing, you have some control over where you're going. The, the movement keys will always do something to control where you're going. And, the, and, and often there will be other things, like even when you're on just a motorcycle, you, there, there are two keys that you, you can lean forward, you know, being on, be, be on the, the front wheel. You can lean backward, being on, on the back wheel, you know. I didn't find a ton of use for it, but it is still there. You can pretty much always really do something to affect how you're going through. So, yeah. And the parachuting, you can be parachuting from tremendously high up and which again is where it's really nice that you can also free fall because if you don't want to take you know several minutes to go from from really high up to further down then just free fall a bit of the way re-engage your parachute you can do that as many times switch back and forth between the two as many times as you like and kind of I, I don't think there's really a limit to how far, you know, how far off the ground you have to be to re-engage the parachute. If you land in the water, you can just swim. I, I'm not even sure there's much of a height requirement. And, and it doesn't even matter if you're using the parachute or not. It'll just disappear when you reach the water, and then you can swim. You can dive. You can be swimming around under the sea. There's not a tremendous lot to explore down there, I will say, but it is still cool, and it, it looks pretty good when you're under the water. You know, they have the, the, you know, it's not that unique anymore, or may, maybe it wasn't even in 2006, but they did at least apply it. You have the, the filters on, on the, the screen, you know, so you can tell you're underwater. And... Yeah, the, there's, a, there's a grappling gun, which can be used to basically, at, at the very least, grapple to any vehicle. If, if it's manned, then, then you can grapple to it. You know, if, if there's someone driving it or using it, even if they're, you know, parked at a red light or, stum or something, as long as there's a driver in the car or whatever, yeah, you can, you can grapple. From the grapple, you can give yourself more or less, what's it called, uh, rope, I guess. 
and if you if you go all the way in on the rope either just you know pulling all the way in on the rope or you know when you get a certain you you can be prompted to you can jump to the vehicle and yes again i'm not just talking cars i'm talking you can be you want a helicopter you want you want that apache is that what you want you want that apache that's shooting it okay Use the wrapping gun. This can be a little more difficult. Helicopters are some of the more difficult to, to get, even if you do properly grapple. Do note that it takes like a full second or two for the, the rope to fully shoot out. So if it moves in that time, you gotta try again. But you do have unlimited tries with the grappling gun. And yeah, it's... It's just a ton of fun to actually steal the Apache Chopper or the tank that a second ago was making your life just impossible, you know, and just steal it. The moment you, you go into a vehicle, you literally see Rico just grabbing the guy, tossing him out. It doesn't matter who it is, by the way. The gorillas, the gorilla don't care if you steal one of their vehicles, or if you steal a car from a, a villager, so there's still that aspect from, you know, the, the, the Grand Theft Auto thing, so yeah, that's a ton of fun, you, you can grapple from parachuting, so if you just get yourself into the air somehow, again, speed or jumping off of a hill, you can grapple to a helicopter, a boat, not 100% sure you can with a plane. Actually, now that I think about it, yeah, you, you can with a plane as well. Planes are a little, little rarer than, you know, helicopters and the like. With that, I suppose I have covered pretty much all the vehicles, but just, just to make it easier to really, really completely grasp, yes. There are cars, motorcycles, boats, helicopters, and planes in this. And, and when I say boats, I don't only mean boats. There's, there's at least one submarine in this game. So yeah, that's, that's good fun. And all of them can be used by you. All of them might appear in a mission and be used against you. Every vehicle that I've just mentioned has at least one form, which is armed. So there's that. To, to compare it very directly to Grand Theft Auto, note I have not played Beyond Vice City yet. I will be getting to, at the very least, San Andreas and Grand Theft Auto 4 and its expansion packs. Helicopters and boats are a lot more common here and certainly more useful than they are in Grand Theft Auto 3, or boats are. There's no helicopters in Grand Theft Auto 3, only the, the plane. They're, they're much more common and more useful. I don't remember for sure. It's been a while since I played Vice City. I could imagine that boats are also quite useful there. D don't get me wrong. Overall, Grand Theft Auto is by far better than this. Now, the, the commonality of helicopters and boats in this game might make you think, oh, so, you know, they get kind of boring. No, they do not. Because, again, you are, you know, okay, if you go into a helicopter, if you go into an Apache, you might also be fighting Apaches. Like, you might be, and, and multiple, you might be fighting several Apaches at once. You know, if, if you're lucky, maybe you're only fighting helicopters that only have a machine gun. So, you know, you're less threatened by them. But, yeah. Do know, a helicopter can be shot down with small arms fire, if there's enough of it. So, yeah. Now, the... So, yeah, the, the... Basically... Land vehicles, let's go with that helicopters, planes, and boats can all be useful in just a very 
straightforward use. The, the island comprises, uh, or yeah, there, there's just over a kilometer of square miles, a square, square, I think you'll get what I mean. If not, <laughs> I can't help you there. I'm not a math person. Anyway, yeah, there's, there's, so yeah, there, that's, that's the amount of space you get to explore. Now, I will note, as others have pointed out, 70% of it is jungle and sea. So, yeah, again, rushed. It's, it doesn't make full use of that, but there is a lot of sea, so if you want to get from point A to point B, even if it's only like a couple hundred meters, you might be, it might be better for you to sail that distance. It might take you a while if you've got to find a bridge. So, yeah, sailing is, and again, even if you, even if the, the only boat you can see is like a hundred meters away or more, you can grapple to it, or, you know, may possibly even get to it just from parachuting. <clears throat> and yes, by the way, you can indeed just be hanging from behind, with, with the grapple and the parachute, a vehicle for a period of time. You don't actually have to take it over, you know, necessarily. So that's also a way to help deal with the... Apache. Now, and, yeah, another thing is there's a lot of cliffs. So if you want to get up a cliff, you can drive and, you know, find. Th there's always a way, no matter what vehicle you're using, there's always some way to get to where you are. But Helicopter's gonna get the job done faster. Do you have to get from one part of the the level to another part of the level? And you know it's a it's a far distance. Well, nothing's gonna get you. Well, yeah, it's it can it if you want to go there by your own power. The fastest way you're gonna get there is a plane. So yeah. And I've already mentioned, but it really, it bears repeating, control is always smooth, responsive. You don't spend very much time in a vehicle before you master its controls. And before anyone says, well, you know, in Grand Theft Auto, it's supposed to be difficult to fly at least the plane. I can appreciate the flying plane is difficult, but driving a car also takes more than it does in Grand Theft Auto. The, the, the gears and the like, yeah. And in this game, every vehicle is as easy to maneuver and control as a car is in this or in Grand Theft Auto. And I frankly do think that that makes more sense than a full on. It, it maybe also, I suppose you could make the argument that, you know, in Grand Theft Auto, you are, you know, a street thug, you start as a street thug, you're not a pilot. Whereas Rico has been trained in all these different vehicles. But, but yeah, it's, it's tremendously easy. I mean, and without it being like too easy either, I, you know, I made sure to try to take off and land every plane I came across, pretty much. And in most cases, I could do it pretty much right off the bat. There was one where it took me two tries, and that's literally it. The, the controls are that intuitive, and you're always told what the you know, 
yeah, what, what controls you got. The moment you get into a new vehicle, it tells you, or get an, a new weapon which has very specific attributes that no prior weapon of yours has. For example, the sniper, which has zoom, although I don't know why, because it can barely zoom in or out. Again, they should have just said, no zoom. No zoom for you! Because that would have been a lot less awkward than you pressing the button and it barely zooming in or out. So, yes, there's the... So, so you're told, you know, what will this button do? And if you don't mess around with them, the buttons will not change that much. Like, left shift and left control tend to be accelerate and decelerate, respectively, on pretty much any you know, that you, so, so, or, or that basic thing, so let's say you're in, you know, in, in the plane that's accelerate and decelerate, or increase, and yeah, if you're on the motorcycle, you know, the, the it'll be front wheel or back wheel that you'll be, you know, doing the, the thing on, let's see, else do we have? On, on the helicopter, it's up or down. It, the, the helicopter is tremendously easy to use and again common and it really makes... it gives you more options in this. It, the, the availability of all these vehicles makes... yeah, it, it just... It, really makes you think about how do I want to approach this next, especially with the main missions. Not that much with the side missions because really it's, like I said, it's pretty much just getting, you know, back and forth. So, although again, there, you know, maybe a helicopter would be easier. Some Rioja bases are, you know, up, uh, yeah, up a cliff, so. It's going to be quicker if you're using a helicopter. Now, something else that's great and that I really... This is, this is one of the hair-tearing aspects of Grand Theft Auto. And again, have not played Beyond Vice City, maybe they have addressed it by now. One of the fairly few genuinely notable and interesting things about Total Overdose, you can bail out of a vehicle at a moment's notice. Regardless of the vehicle, if you're, if you're bailing out of an aerial vehicle, you probably want to engage the parachute, but you can do it. So if you sense, I'm going to get blown out of the sky, well, bail out. That's it. You don't have to... And again, don't, don't get me wrong, I don't, I don't blame Grand Theft Auto for not having parachutes, but you can't even jump out of a car or off a motorcycle. Again, as far as Vice City at least. In this you can. You can throw yourself off a motorcycle, you can jump out of the car in a, you know, you can literally, if your car is on fire and you're driving towards a, one of those roadblocks for the liberations, you can be driving it towards that bailing out of the car in the meantime, the car will, you know, the, the, what's it called? Inertia will keep the car moving into the roadblock, it'll blow up, that'll take, you know, some damage towards the roadblock without you necessarily having spent any explosives on it, so, yeah. And then there's the stunt position. This is not for every vehicle. You cannot... There, there is no stunt position on the motorcycle. And I think that pretty much covers it. Well, maybe some of the smaller boats, possibly. Stunt position is where you can literally, with another press of a button, activate your parachute. And this is regardless of if you're on the ground or in the air. And, you know, again, Keep in mind, by the way, did I mention that from a parachute you can use any weapon 
other than C4, but... And, and the oddly executed melee. Basically, you have to be really close. If you press it when it is... It, and it just, it's called unarmed. I don't know why, you know, I had to read several different places. No, no, the game has melee. And then I try moving really close and then hitting, and yeah, it, it works. Anyway, any other weapon you can use while parachuting down, you're a difficult target because you're parachuting. They don't know exactly where you'll go. You can still control, you can guide the parachute and be shooting with, with assisted aim, by the way. Again, a, a good tactical opportunity. Do you want to run in? Do you want to drive in? Do you want to fly in? Do you want to parachute in? So, yeah. Do note, and this is really, I don't know why they didn't do that. This game does not have any drive-by feature. You can't, like, shoot to the sides like you can in Grand Theft Auto 3 and onwards. I don't know why, but anyway. Yeah, so, so there's the... Yeah, stunt mode. You can use the parachute, and that's going to be quicker than, you know, you, you still can do something. If you, if you bail out of a car and just jump out to the side, you know, he does a roll, it's going to take a full second or two before you can actually shoot again or anything. By the way, you can shoot while jumping as well. From the parachute, you can shoot instantly, so, again, several different opportunities. You can surprise your enemies quite nicely with that. And another thing you can do from the stunt mode is ba basically if you if you grapple to a vehicle, you'll also be in the stunt mode. So you can just keep hanging on to the vehicle, you know, until you feel like taking it over or what you want to do. And from that position, you can also jump off. And if there is another vehicle close by, you can jump to that vehicle. And again, I do mean vehicle, I don't just mean car and motorcycle. You can jump to a helicopter from, you can jump from one helicopter to another. You can, you know, if, if you feel like I'm going to get blown out of the sky by this guy, I want his chopper. Get to the stunt position, fly real, you know, fly real close, get to the stunt position, hop onto his, take it over. You just took care of two problems at once. So, there's that. I've talked some about the shooting already. To get more into that, basically, at, at its core, the shooting here is definitely better than Grand Theft Auto. Again, you know, up to and including my city, anyway. It's, in this, it feels more like a typical third-person shooter. You know, it, the, the shooting portions in this are like that of, you know, Max Payne, you know, discounting the, the bullet time, obviously, and Alan Wake. Yeah, I guess I don't play very many third-person shooters, but anyway, yeah, it, it just, it works quite well like that, and the, you know, one, one thing I especially noted in Grand Theft Auto is that you can just barely kind of take cover, like, you might be using a sniper rifle to, to put some distance between them and you, but if you can see them and shoot them, you they, they can see and shoot you. In this, you can actually be taking partial cover behind a tree, or shoot and then instantly go behind cover, things like that. So there's much more tact, you know, yeah. You, you can employ more tactics in this when, when shooting. And a lot of the time you will also have help when shooting. Like the liberation, you're not going at it alone. You will have a, you know, not quite army, but, you know, a dozen or so guys from whoever you're liberating it for with you. And you do gotta be careful not to just, you know, ignore them, because if, if too many of them die, you might just be completely alone, and, you know, you are taking over a base of operations. They do, 
they prepare for this kind of thing. The roadblocks are not the only thing. There is, there, there's going to be dozens of enemies, so yeah. But yeah, you know, you can choose whether you want to just kind of lead the, you know, the attack going directly, or if you kind of want to sneak up, flank them while they're dealing with your guys, you know, drive in, fly in. Yeah, it's, it's quite nicely, yeah. Now, the, to get, yeah, the, the aspect with you having some support there is unfortunately also one of the things where there is a negative to it. Basically, if you're on a side mission, pretty much always there's going to be a battle between the, the group you're on a side mission for and either the police or the Montanos, and you can, kind of, you can basically ignore it or join it, but the problem is it's, it's, kind of, it's kind of always there. You know, again, not so much variety there, and there's really pretty much just the one intensity to it. Like, the gorillas will send out their attack choppers for just nothing. And yeah, so, the intensity of that can get both kind of tedious and just kind of, you know, guys, I'm just, I'm retrieving some cigars for your great guerrilla leader, leader. Yeah. I don't think sending out the, 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 the you know, the 12th Airborne is, is necessary here. It's just, it's overkill. Why do you need me again? It's... Yeah, I, I really wish that what they had done was basically do what Assassin's Creed did from Brotherhood and onwards, where you have a call support button, so that, you know, if you, if you feel like this is too much heat, or, you know, I, I want a little support, call in some more. Maybe it could, you know, increase in how much, how long you can be having support by your rising through the ranks. You know, maybe, maybe you can somewhat guide it, but here it's just, it's kind of all over the place. It doesn't help that friendly fire in this game can really be an issue, and I mean that in both ways, because, yeah, the attack chopper, it's gonna be using you know, they, they have sort of the same rule of using rockets on vehicles. So if you're being chased by someone in a vehicle, they will shoot rockets very near you. If, if, the pilot, if the helicopter's here, you're here, and the enemy's over here, and they shoot a rocket, it might hit you square on. And again, I'm like, stop helping, please. Don't need to do this. I'd really rather you didn't. And that's, yeah, that's that's half of the, the friendly fire issue. Another is that if you happen to shoot one of your allies, he's going to shoot at you. And what's going to happen is either you die or he does. And I'm sorry to say, typically in that situation, basically you just got to kill him and you've just lost an ally. And that's really annoying because, again, you're not directing them. So if you're shooting at someone and one of them goes right in front of you, that's it. That's going to count as you shooting him and you just lost an ally, one way or another. Either he's shooting at you or you kill him to stop him from shooting at you. So, yeah. The AI in this is very basic at best. Sometimes it's downright terrible. I already mentioned about the mounted gun issue. Now, mounted guns are basically, they're, they're either stationary and they'll be at like bases, or, which, you know, if, if you drag some heat back to a safe house, if, if you're close to a safe house, the heat drops. If you drag some, some heat back to a safe house, you know, at, at least guerrilla safe houses, I might just have a mounted gun defense, so 
there's, there's some aid there as well. Mounted guns also appear on vehicles. I think it's only the cars. And yeah, either, you know, you can mount a gun and, you know, your allies might drive around, or, you know, you can use an enemy's mounted gun against them if you've stopped their car and killed the people around it. You can go out and grab the mounted gun and blow away. The mounted gun is always a machine gun. Actually, there are mounted guns on some boats as well, so, so that's pretty cool. Both the ones that are for you, although I th I'm not sure I encountered any outside of main missions. And there are car, there, there are mounted guns on enemy, uh, enemy boats. So yeah, if the police send out boats for you, it's gonna have a mounted gun. And again, you can disable that by, you know, taking over their their boat. So so that's good. One thing I should really make clear about this is again compared to Grand Theft Auto, this has much better aiming for when you're using anything other than, you know, on foot weapon, you know, in, in that regard, you know, Grand Theft Auto is fine, except for when you go into the first person mode and then, you know, strafe and, you know, movement keys become look up and such, that's, yeah. But yeah, if you're using a mounted gun, it's much easier to, I mean, I'm not saying that, you know, Vice City has an Apache helicopter that you can use, but it's much harder to hit anything with it than any, you know, vehicle gun in this game. Now, in fact, briefly more on that, there's auto-aim for any vehicle, basically, if you're not on foot and shooting, and again, you can't actually be shooting from a vehicle unless the vehicle has a weapon and or you're using the mounted gun. You know, if you're on a motorcycle, you can't just pull out a weapon and be shooting, sadly. Again, you know, something where Vice City clearly does better. But yeah, if you're, if you're using a vehicle of any sort or parachuting down and shooting, it's going to have auto aim. And at first, I got kind of annoyed with the auto-aim because it didn't really seem, you know, sometimes it will literally aim at something that's behind something else, and that's kind of annoying. But if you right-click, which will typically be focus-aim, you know, when, when you're, if you hold it down while parachuting, or if you use it on foot, it's focus-aim, which, again, Grand Theft Auto, I, I really, I expect that will be in one of the next ones I get to. It, it toggles, it, it'll, you know, switch to another target in the basic area. And by the way, whenever you have a weapon, you know, whether you're on foot or anything else, you can always be shooting in a solid 90 degree angle in front of you. You know, if you, if you want to shoot behind you, you will have to turn around, and that might take some time. But other than that, you can be shooting, you know, up or down, left or right, anything, just as long as it's within that 90 degree angle, so that's, that's great. And again, auto-aim within that 90 degree angle. Now, the, the mounted guns, again, have a negative side. This, the thing is, you can't tell one of your allies, please mount the gun. Just not gonna happen. It, it might happen some in main missions, but that's about it. You can't commandeer a guerrilla vehicle with a mounted gun and they'll just go up on top and support. You, you can use the mounted gun on a guerrilla vehicle. A lot of those will have mounted guns, but only if the vehicle is standing still when you get on it. Because, again, you can't tell them Please stop, I want to mount the gun. Just not gonna happen. They have to be standing still. And if they leave the car, then you're just sitting there. Um, you know, you might as well be just using a regular mount, a, a stationary mounted gun. And 
a lot of the time they will just stop, get out of the car, and shoot at whoever is in front of them. You know, they're, they're not thinking about the fact that you're on top, and if they drive around the enemies, then you're a difficult target with a lot of firepower. And when you disengage the mounted gun, also, if they're not stopping, you just kind of hop off, and if there's a car behind you and it slams into you, you might just die. In fact, if you want to take over a vehicle, you're going to want to fire some warning shots into the air or something. If you like get in front of it to make it stop, it might just run you over. It, that doesn't necessarily mean death, but it could. So that's, and, and if that happens while you're on a mission already low on health, that's really annoying. Now, to get more into sort of health and the, these kinds of things, there is a, there's a substantial difference here between Grand Theft Auto 3 and, and Just Cause. And that, again, I like. I like that they don't just copy the formula. And the, basically, if you have a weapon, then you can get full ammunition for that weapon by going to a safe house or starting a liberation, although there you'll have to click a bunch of times. But in a safe house, you just click once, and then you have full ammo for every weapon you're currently carrying. Same with health. Go to a safe house. Click use on the medkit, full health, that's it. You can pick up ammo and health on dead enemies. This is, <laughs> as you may have already been able to deduce, this is a bit of an arcade style game. Yeah, some enemies will drop health. A lot of them will drop ammo. They'll, they'll drop their current weapon, so if you're using the same weapon, or you may want to actually swap to that weapon, which again, you have to activate. It's not just if you walk over a weapon, you now have that weapon, which is a bit of a problem in Vice City, if I recall, because you might have wanted to keep the other weapon, and suddenly you have this new weapon that you didn't really expect to suddenly have. But anyway, yeah. And there, you know, it's a double-edged sword. The good thing is, if you're not killing enemies, then your ammo and your health is very finite. You can't just collect, you know, 9,999 bullets. Or, you know, Luftballons, like in Grand Theft Auto. You will... You will have just a, a typical shooter loadout, like, let's say you have an assault rifle, maybe it has 30 bullets in the clip, it has 200 extra bullets. Once those are gone, you can't use that weapon anymore until you find more bullets. So, yeah. And the health, also, if you don't find any, you know, if you're not killing enemies that then spawn health packs, don't get hit. That's, that's basically it. You know, watch the health bar closely. Now, the, the bit of issue here is that that also kind of means that, again, it doesn't lead to a lot of variety because you can't really be for, for one thing, as long as you do have several weapons, you can just switch between the several weapons. You don't have to be, you know, if you die, if you die in Grand Theft Auto and you don't have, you know, yeah, you might have to just go and buy some weapons again, which means going physically to a gun store. In this, you just have to get to a gorilla safe, guerrilla safe house, which, sure, you don't, you know, they're not there from the very start, but, you know, you'll have at least one within, a f you know, a few missions of the game, and 
that one will have every weapon you've earned with the Gorillas so far. And once you pick it up, you then, you know, have full ammo for it immediately when you pick up at, at a safe house. And once you've used the bullets, you can just go back to a safe house. So once you're not, you know, being chased around a mission, you go back to the safe house, full ammo. So you're not necessarily watching the ammo that closely, and you're not worrying about, you know, where will I get more ammo for this gun. You're not running around collecting ammo before a mission, which I always found was a quite realistic part of Grand Theft Auto. It's very, you know, I'm, I'm working for organized crime. I know I gotta go out and I might have to kill some people, I might have to fend off some people, Sometimes it means killing a, you know, sometimes it means dying, sometimes it means killing a whole lot of people. I told you, I can't go, I can only go for so long without a Sin City reference. So, yeah, it's like, well, I guess th there's a gun shop over here, I could buy some more ammo. You know, what have you, you'll be, you'll be gathering ammo, and in this, not so much. So, again, and, and... There is no, there, there's only the health, there is no getting a Kevlar vest, you know, and then, you know, you have a little, you have a bit extra, but maybe you can't get the Kevlar vest out. No, there's just no Kevlar, there's only the health meter. And the, I also already mentioned that heat goes down when you, when you're very near a safe house, that's also it, you can't bribe the police away from it, and Again, I, I appreciate that they're trying something different, but when, you know, there, there are no respray shops, there's no bribing, so you only have the one option if you're trying to get, and I can appreciate that this also means that when on a big mission, you can't do anything about the heat. So if there's a, an Apache chopper on you, there's an Apache chopper on you, and you can shoot it down, but they're still on your tail they might send more Apache choppers after you, so... And that's good, but I feel like they could have still accomplished this whilst having some other form of, you know, getting rid of the heat than just the safe houses. Now, I suppose that more or less covers that. The... Another thing about weaponry is that you do always have your dual, like, I think there are high-powered revolvers that, you know, it's 12 bullets total, it reloads really quickly, and you do always have that. And it's, you know, it's one of the weaker pistols, and thus obviously one of the weaker weapons in the game, but it means you can never run out of ammo for, you know, b bullet-wise. Now, as I've already somewhat alluded to, there are no, there, there is no money in this game. You don't, you can't uh, go, you know, like, like I mentioned, respray shops, they also repair your vehicle. There's none of that here. If a vehicle gets damaged, at some, at some point you have to switch it out for another, which isn't really a huge issue because you would always find another vehicle, but usually find another vehicle, but it does still, again, mean, you know, you don't get to make the choice, do I want to find myself a respray shop, or, you know, do I have to bail? And if you're trying to, if your mission is to get the vehicle you're currently in safely to a certain garage, then, you know, if it gets shot up, you just have to hope that you can make it. There's no, you know, taking a detour to make sure it gets repaired like in Grand Theft Auto. So, yeah, there's, there's no... there's no switching out clothes, you don't get to buy apartments, you know... The only way you can tell you're making progress is by rising through the ranks, and that does have a limitation. Once you get to the highest level for both groups, that's it. You can't really tell from that point on if you're doing anything, like, again, in Grand Theft Auto, you can always earn more money, you know, even if you don't necessarily think, you know, what will I spend it on? Well, I 
I want a lot of money. Make it rain. And that's kind of, yeah, nothing like that here. Once, once you've completed the main mission, the, yeah, I've covered that quite nicely already. I am told that there is a sort of lag bug in this when you play for extended periods, but again, faulty, so yeah, did not experience that. The most common bug I did experience was it crashing my entire computer, like freezing up and, you know, gotta turn off the computer to turn it back on. I could somewhat get rid of this by you know, making sure not to run anything else pretty much literally on the computer while I play the game and turning the graphics way down but it would still sometimes happen and that's just no way to have to, I mean this game's from 2006, my computer can easily run you know, I've played Hitman Absolution highest, you know with with no real issue there, so just yeah, it kind of and and Max Payne three for that matter. So there's not really any excuse for it freezing up like that. Now I with me already having covered some of the. Some of the aspects of the game where, you know, yeah, like ammo limitations and such. While I don't know if this is the case, it does feel very much like they kept adding things to even out the difficulty rather than dealing with what they already had. They, they wrote themselves into a corner and rather than just getting a good old eraser and working on it again, they just, you know, start climbing up the wall and start riding on the ceiling. Yes, so basically, where... Let's, let's start with the, you know, the unlimited ammo issue of Grand Theft Auto. What they added here was to say, well, we'll limit carry capacity. You can also, you can't carry very many weapons. Other than your unlimited pistols, you can carry one pistol, one submachine gun, your two types of C4, and then there's the, the spot for a weapon, which, and I do kind of like that they did this, it can be occupied by an assault rifle, a yeah, one of these, one of the, the ones I mentioned, an assault rifle, a grenade launcher, a rocket launcher, a sniper, or a shotgun. And I should briefly mention the the one shot style, the the, the law style bazooka, can also be carried on the submachine gun slot instead of a submachine gun, and I think that slot will also allow a double barrel, a sawed-off shotgun. But yeah, so, you know, you really gotta think about what you choose for the, that last slot. Do you want, yeah, of, of all the, all the different types. And yes, that does mean if you both carry an assault rifle and a submachine gun, you don't have any you know, one shot bring down a helicopter weapons, so think about that. And at the same time, you can be running around with two of those, although note that they use the, the same ammo, both bazookas in the game. But, but yeah, so they did that, and then, you know, what about if you run out of ammo at a really bad time? Again, you know, an assault rifle will have 30 bullet, might have a 30 bullet clip and then 200 extra bullets, so, and you have very limited carry capacity in general. What if you run out? We'll add pistols that never run out. Well, how do we make heat matter? On the highest level of heat, 
we have, you know, an attack helicopter dedicated to the player. And, and you know, a, a bunch of cops. Might that not get to be too much for the player to handle? Well, let's say we make sure that their group supports them. And here we are. That's Now we have all of these different things and they do kind of, you know, there are some conflicts between them and really it would have been, you know, if, if they, if it, if it maybe wasn't quite as much of an arcade game, it could be more fun. And I'm not saying that as, you know, I, I have no problem with arcade games. I'm saying this is not the best arcade game out there. I love the House of the Dead games, you know. Yes, I, I might criticize them some, but I, I, especially the first one, I freaking love the original, The House of the Dead. And Overkill is pure awesomeness. If, if you have a Wii and you don't have that game and you at all enjoy rail shooters, you know, get the game. Unless, unless you're like below 18, because there is some pretty <laughs> adult material in that game. And by pretty, I do mean extremely. Anyway, yeah, that's, that's one example. While I would never claim it's flawless, the 2004 Punisher video game is a much more enjoyable arcade style game. One of the things that that game does really right is to focus on points that you then have to earn more of the way Grand Theft Auto has money, whereas in this, whether you, you know, sometimes a liberation and a side mission might get you the same amount of points to rank up the group, like they don't even care if you complete 10 missions or you liberate ten different places, it doesn't matter to them. Just, yeah, do whatever. Eh, you know, yeah, that just really makes you feel like, you know, what am I doing here? Now, I suppose that covers that aspect fairly nicely. With, I've already mentioned how much you get to explore, and that, you know, a lot of it is, is jungle. Part of it is the, you know, others have, have pointed out, have, have literally said, it feels like a deserted island, and I would have to agree. And I'd say it's, it's too empty. There's too much of the island which is uninhabited. Like, there are a number of villages and, and towns and such, but then there's also a lot of places that just, or it's only jungle and there's barely any, like, you know, not even much animal life. Like, they'll have a few birds, but that's basically it. And I do mean a few. You know, it's, there's too little traffic and, frankly, travel times are too, can, can really be excessive. Now, I get why this is. This is because they want to give you the experience of sailing for just like a straight kilometer without really, you know, for example, you know, without really having to turn too much and, and flying without, you know, without constantly having to turn. Like, that's basically, even, even on the faster planes, but what would make more and, and it's probably also in part because of the, the rush job that it's so uninhabited, let's say. But it, it does really, you can really tell, you know. Now, as I've already somewhat mentioned the, you know, alluded to, with all these different elements under your control, the parachute, the very different types of vehicles and such, you can really get creative with all these things and just, you know, what, how do you want to approach this, you know. Handling of vehicles 
typically is okay. There are a few times where it is, excuse me, downright bad. But yeah, it's it's not too often I would say. But I can I can understand why some people would be unhappy with the handling overall. It is a very clear port, console port. The I've already mentioned grenades. You and enemies alike, you know, have grenades, can attack with grenades, and whether it's a grenade you threw or they threw, you can shoot it in the air to make it blow up. So that's that's quite fun, and it's very easy to do this, whether you know, no matter where you're shooting and the like. And yeah, this is extremely useful. You can literally turn an enemy's grenade into a weapon against them. If, you know, a crowd and one of them throws a grenade, shoot the grenade, and then, yeah. And that's, again, quite arcade game-like. Now, it's also quite nice. It's a game where you don't really have to slow down. It's a game where you can always be speeding ahead, if, if that is what you want. You don't have to sneak ever. You don't have to really go around. If, if you want to just go right in on, you know, in a tank, in an Apache helicopter, expect that some of them will put up a fight, but you can. You, you always can. Now, I've mentioned the, the C4. You have two different types. One is timed, and I think it's like 10 seconds, which is just enough to haul ass because it is powerful stuff. One of the most dangerous things in this game is getting too close to an explosion or being in a vehicle when it is destroyed, which I suppose is also an explosion. And the other type, you trigger yourself. And you have five of each, you know, you don't have to choose, so you can. You can use C4 ten times in a row without getting more. Now, the triggered, you don't get to choose which you trigger. When you, when you use the trigger, it blows up every C4 you've placed since last time you triggered. Now, the... The... The graphics are okay to downright good, and that's that's basically as good as they, you know. I would say the best, the most impressive sight in the game is descending through the clouds. Whether, you know, be it in a helicopter or, you know, in freefall or using the parachute, just looking at the island, coming closer, seeing the clouds, as you pass through them and come all the way down, yeah, it's it is genuinely you know breathtaking, and it's a sight that not that many games offer of of this sort. Anyway, the 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 open world third person action adventure, and other than that, it's yeah the the choice of an exotic island is maybe not the best because the the plant life just looks bad. There's a lot of the early 3D stuff, you know, we're talking Duke Nukem 3D where this is how a, a 3D object might look. You know, there, there are the two sides to it and you just kind of go around and you, you never seem to quite get the, the... I don't know quite how to put it. I guess you never see the side of it. It has the one, you know, like this is one texture, this is the this is the same texture, and they're just plopped together to make it seem like 3D, but it's very obviously not. And then there's there's a little bit of an issue with you can't tell which trees you'll pass through and which ones you'll ram into. I'm not saying either or would be bad, you know, if you passed through all of them, or if you slammed into all of them, but you can't tell, and that can be a problem. 
Now, there, there are no ragdoll physics in this game. Literally, if you shoot someone repeatedly so that they go into the air, it looks like a pair of invisible fingers picked the guy up and just lifted, lifted him up a bit. There, yeah. I'm actually, I'm, I'm pretty sure it does say, you know, Halleck engine in this, and I'm just like, well, I don't know, maybe in the vehicles. The vehicles have pretty decent physics, although some of them are extremely bouncy. And they're also, your average car in this game will take a lot more punishment than your average car in Grand Theft Auto. And again, I do favor Grand Theft Auto because that's a good way to make you careful when you drive and worry about traffic and worry about, you know, cops rear-ending you. That, you know, that gives you an incentive to make sure the cops are behind you and not slamming into you. Far behind you, I should say, where in this you can kind of just keep going. Like, you can, you'll can you drive off a cliff well, quite often in this game, you know, not even needing to use the parachute. And while the driving off a cliff thing is just awesome, like a lot of other things in this game, the fact that, you know, the car landing, as long as it doesn't end up being on its roof, like, if it lands on the side and then keeps turning over five or six times, and yes, this does happen, the car will still be fine. You don't have to exchange it for another. So, yeah. Now, there are some really cool things here. You can, you can very much tell that you're getting help from the CIA, and with it still being finite, you know, it's supposed to be a low-level operation, it's not an invasion, you know, you're technically not even there, that, that kind of thing, there, yeah. So, basically this takes the form of vehicle drop, which will drop any of the four vehicles, provided you run them, that the agency offers. And yes, several of these are armed. So that's good. And it does cover the different, you know, there's at least one vehicle that'll allow you to fly, at least one that'll allow you to sail, and at least one that'll allow you to drive. Now, the... Yeah, and, and basically this does have the limitations that you can only call one at a time. If, you're, if your most recent agency vehicle, agency vehicle drop vehicle, is still in one piece, it, they're not going to drop another one before that one is destroyed. And if you are not in a clear enough spot, if you have to be like on high ground and such, then it also can't drop one. And another th part where they give help is the extraction feature, which literally lets you go pretty much instantly. Like they'll, you know, in both cases, a chopper will come in, and with the, you know, the vehicle drop literally is they they will drop a, a big you know, wooden box, which will fall apart on impact, and in there is your vehicle. Good as new. In fact, new, I, I guess. An extraction, they, you know, land, pick you up, and then they literally drop you over a, a safe house of your choosing, which is any you've unlocked so far, or the briefing point for the, the next main mission. Now, the extraction cannot be used while you're under attack, meaning if, if you have any heat, which, by the way, there are two heat meters, one for the police and military, and one for the Montanos, and yes, you might have to deal with both at the same time. It, it doesn't happen that often, though, as, as is my experience with it. Now, the... The extraction will also not work, I think it's if you have just used it, like maybe basically the, the helicopter that just dropped you has to fly off first, and there's maybe also something about if you're too close to, an, to a safe house, 
this can be a little annoying because it doesn't tell you which it is. It just says extraction not available. I do kind of wish that they would say you are too close or too little time has passed and give you a counter or something. The GPS map is quite useful. When you open it, you can turn any legend you want, including several at a time, including pretty much all of them at a time, on or off by just, you know, by just choosing it and pressing the, the you know, on off switch key. And yeah, it, it makes it really easy to find the closest thing to... You, you unfortunately can't set a custom marker like you can in more recent Assassin's Creed games, but to be fair, when this came out, only one Assassin's Creed game had come out, and that one did not have it, so yeah. The, you always have a 360 degree camera, but if, if you're not focusing, then you have a 360 degree camera. You can, you can be looking behind Rico while you're running towards the camera if you want to, like, you know, I'm not saying you can dodge bullets, and I'm also not saying that you won't have to make of that what you will, and, you know, and this really makes it easy to, you know, gives, gives, again, gives you tactical opportunities. You can check out, you know, in front and at the sides, and yeah, any vehicle as well. Although you really sometimes wish that there was like a button you could hold down to make the camera turn faster, because looking behind you when you're driving to check out the, the people hunting you, you're probably not going to be able to turn around before, you know, a car is in front of you that you have to drive away from or something and there there isn't a button that you can press to instantly look behind or instantly look to one of the, one of the sides so yeah that's a bit again wish they had done that you can shoot out tires although it it is not as easy as in Vice City which to an extent is also a good thing because in Vice City you you know your tires will get shot out like nobody's business. It'll just happen. Now, the game can be rather tense and exciting. There, there's a lot to keep track of in, in its more... In, in its tenser moments without it being impossible to keep track of. Again, you can... You can parachute away, grapple to a vehicle. You know, you can change the circumstances quite, you know, quickly. Actions largely have consequences in this, although sadly not quite always. You... It, again, it's, it's... Yeah, when compared to, like, Assassin's Creed, if, you know, if you get a lot of people after you, you can't just kill them. They'll keep coming, like in Grand Theft Auto. And, yeah, the... You know, again, if you go up against an Apache helicopter, it will fight back, whether you're on foot or in a vehicle. Where it doesn't really have any consequences is that the side missions are preposterously... like Part of the lack of variety is also that it, it lacks specific terms. Where, again, there won't that often be a time limit, or, you know... In Grand Theft Auto, you might be told, okay, you, you have a certain amount of time, you have to get one of each of these types of vehicles, and you have to find them by yourself. So you have to be like, okay, where would that car be? What is their turf? In this, if you have to get a certain car, well, there might be a time limit, but it'll direct you to that exact car, and it has to be that exact car. If that exact car gets blown up, it doesn't... Like, it might be a cop car, and cops might follow you. They might eventually destroy the car. You can't just take another cop car. The mission has just failed. And the time limit will... You know, the time limit is only until you get close to the car. Then you can take your sweet time actually capturing the car. Now... So, so yeah, the, the lack of consequences. Even if you've just traded with someone, you can steal a car, a vehicle from them, and drive back in it. Sure, they'll, they'll open fire, 
but it's not going to be mission failed. You know, you would think that, well, I can't do more traits with them, I guess, but nope, there's nothing like that. And another thing is, I, I've already mentioned that, you know, you lose your guns if you die. Once you've gotten fairly, a, a bit up in the guerrilla ranks, then getting them back isn't difficult. It's just getting back to a guerrilla safe house. And there you go. Great weapons for the, the various things. And there is no... There is no prison and no hospital in this. So... Basically, you know... Well, the hospital is basically, you know, you don't really need a hospital because it, it has the basic same effect. You know, you lose your weapons. Actually, I think you do have to heal yourself also. If you, if you die, you come back with limited health. But that also, that, that is never a problem. That's just going to a safe house, which you can extract to in no time. Now, the, the lack of a prison, though, does mean that the police will always and only try to kill you. They will never try to arrest you. I can, I can see an argument for it story-wise, because you're not a citizen of there, but it really takes a lot away from it that when cops, like, if they force your car to a stop, if they block off your, your car, they can't just go in and you know, point a gun at you and arrest you like they can in Grand Theft Auto games. Because if you have a lot of health, then just get out of the vehicle, shoot them, and move on. That's, that's not a problem, at least not on the lower levels of heat. And yeah, that really takes a lot of it. It takes a lot away from it. Now, I suppose that more or less covers it. There are a few different kind of weather patterns in this, and they do vary. You don't have a, you know, hour clock like in Grand Theft Auto, but it does appear to go on. You know, it might be a sunny day, maybe a rainstorm will break out, and it might be a nighttime. And again, when you're up above the clouds and you're like watching a sunrise or a sunset, that's just, that's gorgeous. Now, that might more or less cover it. Now, the characters are also quite one note. They, yeah, just, they really have the one trait, and that's it for their personality. And that, that goes for all of them. Now, I believe that covers it. Actually, briefly, the, the races are checkpoint races, so much like in Grand Theft Auto. Now, the big difference is there, there aren't really any other racers, which, again, takes a lot of the fun of that away. But they do vary in difficulty, although you, you can't tell from, you know, when you, when you go to the guy who lets you race, He's not, you know, you can't tell what difficulty it is before you start. Now, the, the, the missions, the main missions have checkpoint saving. And I love this. I wish more games like this would do it. it I suppose, yeah, Assassin's Creed also does it. I'm aware of that. But... They botch it by, when you reload a checkpoint, if you fail a mission or die, and you go back to a checkpoint, poof, full health. 
it 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 takes all the fun away from it. You you never really have to restart. No matter how poorly you did, as long as you got just a little bit further, so it saved another checkpoint. There you go. Now it's just here they do it properly. If the, whatever your stats are when you get to a checkpoint, those are your stats whenever you reload that checkpoint. And if you don't complete the mission and save your game, which it'll allow you to do the moment you complete the mission, literally, it'll prompt you, do you want to save the game? You don't have to go back to a safe house or anything. You have the stats that you had when it reached the checkpoints, no matter what. If you spent too much ammo, if you didn't get enough, if you didn't save enough of your health, too bad, you're going to have to abort the mission and start it over. So, yeah, you, that again, that encourages really putting in the effort, and that makes it tense. Now, I, have, I uh, may not have fully gone into... The game is really... Is, is like, very happy to just throw pure awesomeness your way. You know, the, the there's a sports car with machine gun, dual machine guns on on the front of it. There's there's a monster truck. An Apache helicopter will appear at a safe house. You can you can be sailing and firing machine guns and rockets and sailing fast at that. There's there's a jet armed with rockets in this game. Yeah, it's it's just it's tremendously awesome. But get it, giving you new toys to play with is how this game keeps you coming back. It is not the promise of exploring new area. You can explore the entire map right from the start. It's almost intimidating. I suppose basically you're aided by the fact that you only do have you start with the one safe house and basically, you know, it, it makes sense to stay near that safe house, and then you liberate those first areas. Then you get another safe house in, you know, a, a little further away, or maybe in a completely new area. Then you can move on to that area and use the safe houses as really, you know, operational bases. That certainly makes sense. But, but yeah, no, there's no promise of a new area. There is, which, which is always something that, you know, Grand Theft Auto, you know... It has you coming back to the main missions. You don't have to complete the entire game to explore the entire map, but you do have to complete some of them, and it focuses the storyline. You can't go to the Yakuza before you've, you know, completed some other missions. You know, so you don't... You're not overwhelmed by all these different factions that they're just trying to cram in there. Max <laughs> Payne 3. And it's just... Let's see, what else for Grand Theft Auto? The new area... Compelling mission design, you know, story twists. Just an exciting, engaging story. None of that here. It really is just, they keep tossing toys at you, and once you've completed the main missions, which do keep you coming back, because they, they really do find some nicely varied and different ways to give you awesome missions. You know, the main missions, and once you've reached the highest rank with the two groups, there's nothing else. There's, there's not really anything to explore, because all the areas more or less look the same. Once you've seen one military base, you've seen them all. Once you've liberated one tough area, you've liberated them all. Well, not, not figuratively, but not literally, but figuratively. Yes, language is your friend. And, yeah, there's, there's just not really anything to do at that point. And the missions, as fun as they are, note that there's no mission selector, which, again, you know, fair enough, Grand Theft Auto doesn't have that either, but, you know, 
yeah, it's it's not here either. Now, some have complained about like the climax. I don't see why. It's pretty freaking awesome. The game starts awesome and ends awesome, and with some hiccups along the way, you know, story-wise, the the storyline, the those missions do continue to be awesome, you know. And yeah, the the climax really it's something you remember and it's it's a badass conclusion to the 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 story. You feel like, you know, yeah, that was that was worth playing through the the missions for. Now, I just briefly more on the on the missions Part of, yeah, part of the problem is that, again, they do have this basic, you know, go there, do something, and then come back, you know, infiltrate, do something, and exfiltrate. And it doesn't do enough to change, your, change these things. When it does, it, it works quite well. Like, sometimes you, do, you have to go into an area, and then you have to go around many different places in that area before you can move on. And the main missions do sometimes have more than one area you have to go to and where you have to do something. And certainly when you get to, you know, to, you know, bring forth your inner V, as in V for Vendetta, and blow crap that doesn't really get to be boring in this game, so there's that. Please rate and comment, and hey, if you like this video, that subscribe button's just waiting for you to click it.